Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.3 Beta 4 has been out for a few days. It was a late release last week, but I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'll use different phones in the future. I know a lot of you want to see different phones, but based off the YouTube community poll that I ran, I have a lot of different information from a lot of different phones. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But in this video, I'll talk about how it's been for me on my phone, how it's been for you on your devices based off the YouTube community poll. And then we'll take a look at some of your comments as well. Now, a lot of people expected iOS 13.3 to release today. I think it will release within the next few days, but I don't think it was going to ever be Monday. That was just my opinion. I'm thinking Tuesday with the release of the Mac Pro, you can order that on Tuesday. So I'm thinking something along those lines. Now on my 11 Pro Max, it's been pretty stable. I haven't had a single crash. I haven't had any apps crash and everything for the most part has been really fast and fluid. Let me turn on do not disturb here. And most of the time I've had no issues. Now, initially with this, I know a lot of people say, I don't want to hear this, the LTE to Wi-Fi switching thing. It seems to happen only on the newer phones, 10s and newer, but after a hard reboot, I really haven't had an issue on the 11 Pro Max. So for the most part, switching from Wi-Fi to LTE has been pretty seamless for me for the most part. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, it's been good enough that I don't really have to take a look at it very much. This phone is at 100%. It is my normal phone that I use all the time. But you'll see here's my screen on time, two hours and three minutes, 37 minutes, 38 minutes of screen off time. And that one was not so great that day. But today, if we take a look at it, two hours and 33 minutes of screen on time, an hour and seven minutes of screen off time, and maybe 15% usage. So I'm getting really good battery life, usually 10 to 12 hours with the iPhone 11 pro max. It does have a large battery in it. So most of the time it's going to get good battery life. Now, as far as what you had to say, when I talked about that LTE issue, when you're switching from Wi-Fi to LTE, a few of you did have that issue on the newer phones, but only a few of you mentioned that issue. There are a lot of issues with that, but it seems to be resolved with the final releases. So when the final release of 13.3 comes out, I can't imagine that to be an issue since they addressed it in the previous full updates to the public. So those were actually specifically called out and addressed. So those should be fixed. Now, as far as battery for all of you, many people said it was good and many people said it wasn't good. I would say it's about a 50, 50 split and battery was mentioned 67 times in the comments on the YouTube community poll. So maybe 33 of you said it was good and 33 or 34 of you said it was bad. So it's really hit or miss. And I think it comes down to the device you're using and also the applications you're using. People that tend to have things like Facebook installed usually have worse battery life than people that don't. That's just something I've been seeing lately. Now, as far as mail, some people said they're still having issues with mail delivering slowly or notifications not showing up for mail. It is less people mentioning that, about 10 people, and I'll put all the stats right here so you can see how much each thing was mentioned as far as heat and LTE and app crashes and things like that. It's been much better than before, but before I had a lot more comments, so it's hard to say at this point as far as percentage-wise. And then finally, if you have an iPhone 7, it seems like the 7 specifically, not the 7 Plus, seems to have battery issues and can be unstable for some. So I'm not sure what the difference is between the 7 and everything else, but the 7 definitely is having issues for some people. Now, before we talk about the YouTube community poll, here are all the devices mentioned in the comments so you can take a look at how many people are using each device. If you didn't put what device you're using in the comments, I have no way to know. So that's what these stats are based off of. Now, if we take a look at the YouTube community poll, 17,000 of you voted. So I really appreciate that. There were 154 comments. That's phenomenal numbers as far as votes. Comments, it's not huge. I've seen it as high as 450, but votes is incredible, 17,000. So I really appreciate that. So if we take a closer look, you'll see 17% of you said it was great. 3% said it was terrible, 6% said okay, but some bugs, 59% of you are not using the beta. So that's kind of telling, and that's probably a good idea if you don't want to worry about as many bugs. And then 15% of you, which is funny, this number keeps going up, 15% of you are using Android. So thanks again for participating, even though this has nothing to do with Android. Although I do cover Android updates in different videos. So if you want to see those, be sure to check those out on this channel.
Now let's take a look at some of the comments. Now I've sorted the comments from oldest to newest. So you'll see the first one said still having battery drain on the new iPhone 10 R hope iOS 13.4 fixes this. I hope 13.3 fixes this when it comes out and be sure to check and see what's actually using your battery because that could be some apps or background app refresh or things like that iPhone 10, just as solid as iOS 13.3 beta three, good battery, quick response, and no problems. And performance has been good for me as well. Like I said, no, no slowdowns, nothing at all. I'm using iOS 13.2.3 on an iPhone eight. It's been excellent. No discernible issues. And that's where I say when people are concerned, should I go to the beta or not? I normally say, if you have to ask that question, I would stay on the, the stable public release until the next public release comes out. Generally a beta is meant to find bugs and report them to Apple. So if you do have bugs, make sure that you use the feedback app and report them so that they can prioritize those and fix those. iMessage problem takes 30 seconds to send a message. Now this could be related to your carrier, your Wi-Fi, and a bunch of other things. So I'd be curious to know if it improves when the next update comes out on older models, such as the iPhone six S battery drain is noticeable and quickly, but apps are smooth and fast launching and good Ram management. Very few of you mentioned Ram issues on this particular update. Only a couple people. I had amazing battery life on iOS 13.3 beta three. The battery life has taken a hit on 13.3 beta four iPhone seven plus a hundred percent battery health. It's really good overall on my 10 R and feels smooth and fast. Battery life is okay, but not perfect. 13.3 beta four coming from beta three. I didn't notice any difference. Still great. Nothing distinctive. I'm on public beta release. As of now using iPhone 11 pro max on my iPad 11, 11 inch, it's been great running iPad OS 13.3 beta four. So here's someone with an iPhone seven. I'm on iPhone seven. I don't get email notifications on screen, but it's not something major. Other than that, I have no complaints whatsoever, except for email issues. I'm using both my iPad fifth generation and my iPhone seven, and both are working great apart from the battery life on the app iPhone seven. I was on a call the other day on WhatsApp. And from 80%, it went down to 10% in 20 minutes. It really needs sorting out. That could be something that WhatsApp is doing and maybe they're overusing the processor when they're processing video or they're doing something in the background, because if you use FaceTime, it probably won't drop like that. iPhone 10 R battery life is great. And the OS is speedy. Battery life has been terrible on my iPhone seven plus battery health is at 88%. Will the iPhone seven be good in 2020? I hope so. And maybe I'll do a video about that as well. Battery life is great on my iPhone six S plus and speed wise. It's pretty good. And I haven't had any issues at all, to be honest with you, iPhone 11 pro great performance connectivity. Everything is smooth and fast. No freezes happy, much better performance. However, the smart battery case for my iPhone 10 seems to lose connection and only fix is to reboot the phone or the phone reboot. Uh, maybe bring the case to Apple and see if they'll give you a different one. If they still have them in stock. Battery is draining massively on the iPhone SE 99% health and announce messages with Siri is no longer available on beta four. It is for me. So try reconnecting your AirPods. If you're not seeing that sometimes completely disabling that connection and then reconnecting them fixes it. I've been having weird volume problems on my 10 S since the beginning of iOS 13, my volume would drop down really low when switching to my Bluetooth earpiece and stay low after disconnecting from Bluetooth. I believe I fixed the problem by installing the stock music app that I had uninstalled last year. My only other problem that followed with me is every version of iOS 13 is Safari problems. I think you meant 13 not 14. Sometimes I just get blank pages and sometimes the page gets very unstable while scrolling and the whole page jerks side to side. I've seen that only on a couple, but I'm not sure what's causing it. I really haven't seen it myself, but for some reason I've seen a couple people mention that it will shift side to side. The wireless charging bug is gone on my iPhone 11 where it would not charge until I restarted. No bugs to report here iPhone 10 mail app still crashes. Only complaint I have. We'll take a look at a couple more. I can't use my iPhone 10 because it won't give me any signal. So I can't receive calls and messages and I can't call and send myself messages. I would contact your carrier if that's the issue and see if maybe that you need a new SIM card or something's up with the account on iPhone six S it's terrible. My phone gets extremely hot on basic apps such as Snapchat and Instagram. I need to charge my phone two to three times a day with moderate to heavy use performance is okay. Cannot wait for the update, which will fix these issues. 
Great informative videos. Thank you. So I would say with this particular one, I would try and hard reboot the phone and see if it fixes it. Normally, if it's getting overheated or it just feels hot in the back, it will tell you if it's overheating. But if it gets hot in the back and you're just running simple apps, do a hard reset where it just force reboots the phone. And usually that will fix those issues. It's been great on my 11 Pro Max. Battery was draining quite a lot, but I diagnosed the culprit as being the app RoboKiller. Once I uninstalled it, battery life was significantly better. That one app was eating 20% of my battery in a day. I just turned on silence, unknown callers and settings instead saved me a bit of money as well. So that's what seems to happen with a lot of battery drain issues. People are having, it usually comes down to some app causing it. So I would try and diagnose that by going to settings, battery, take a look at your battery and see what's actually using it. So for me, it's Twitter, but I use Twitter, but if there's anything in here that's using a significant amount of battery, I would either uninstall it or make sure all of those settings are off that use GPS and things in the background. So that's it for iOS 13.3 beta four. I would expect the final version this week. There's some carrier documents out there showing that it will be this week, but hopefully we'll see that. And that's really it for this update. I'm hoping for some new features when it's finally released. There's some rumors of some new screen time and privacy features. So hopefully we'll see some of that. And of course, I'll keep you updated with that as well. If you found anything new, let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.